Okay, while we were breaking, I went ahead and put this frisket back on the brim of the hat, and I also put that little bit of triangle. Remember that I said over here, I put that back in place. I'm going to go ahead and work on the leopard skin hat band, and uh, just want to give you a little bit of, you know, how do I go about knowing how to do leopard skin. And in the world of Google image, <laughs> it's pretty easy. You just Google image, leopard skin, and I found this wonderful large file giving me a close-up of what leopard skin looks like. In other words, if uh, I may give this guy a gold tooth, I don't necessarily need to find a photograph of a gold tooth, but if I some, find some photographs of gold, I can translate into tooth. Does that make sense? I didn't find a picture of a guy wearing a hat with a leopard skin hat band. I just made that up, but I found leopard skin. Fair enough? So I'm going to take a very, very close and analytical look at this fur and think, what is it that I'm looking at? Now, I also, when I cut this frisket out, I cut right up to the, I cut the edge of the hat band. I'm going to change my operation right now. I'm going to cut out another piece of frisket because I don't want the edges of that hat band to be razor sharp. I want it to be soft because the edge of fur is soft. Does that make sense? So I'm going to cut out, I've cut out an additional piece of frisket very carefully, making sure I didn't make any line there. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. You understand it doesn't need to be nearly that big. I just uh, wanted to make it an easy cut so I wouldn't cut into the illustration board. So I'm going to freehand this, these two edges over here. Okay, now I'm going to look at my computer monitor. I could, of course, print this out as well, but the, the monitor is, is plenty good enough. And if I were to challenge you to do anything, it would be try to take what you're seeing and translate what you're seeing into verbiage, into words, because that will force you to process right side of your brain through the analytical left side of your brain, and it's, then you can know what you're doing. And uh, as I look at it, first of all, the background is all this yellow ochre, buff colored, tan, beige, perhaps, a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten drops of red oxide and one, two, three, four, five, six drops. This is just a guess, but I want to keep, keep track. Six drops of yellow and about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I've got ten, six, ten. I'll try to remember that. And then I want this to be opaque. So I'm going to go ahead and do some white. Three, four, five. Mix that up with my brush. Ten, I should write that down, but I think I can remember it. Ten, six, ten, five. Looks good in my in the cup there. So I hope it comes out pretty well. And because this is a small area, I'm not quite as concerned about the overspray as I would be. This is just sort of like a base coat. I want to make one adjustment though. I think that I can see when I put this this frisket right here, when I put it back in place, looks to me like it's overlapping ever so slightly down into the, yes it was, so. And if I had left it there, there would have been a very, very fine white line where the frisket was not put back in the right place. Does that make sense? Go ahead and paint some irregularities in the in the fur. I 
Okay. Put this point back on so I don't damage the needle. As I look at the, where's my, here it is, wastebasket. That's what I'm looking for. Ha. I'm going to add some more dark, the red oxide. Because as I look at this monitor and I see the photograph of leopard skin, it's darker in some places, lighter in others. There we go. Okay, now you'll notice, no doubt, that there are no spots yet <laughs> in my leopard skin. I'm going to take some of this black, even though I was having a little bit of trouble with it. And I'm going to freehand the leopard spots. stop there. I'm not done. I'm just getting the basic shapes in place. And uh, as I look at the photograph, the reference that I found here, I would describe the, the spots on a leopard skin are usually they're not complete circles. They tend to be the letter C, like one spot of the circle is open. And uh, instead of being the circles, instead of being made up of a smooth line are more like dots, large fuzzy dots. So that's what I've got so far. What is going to make this look like leopard skin, of course, is the detailing, the texture, the up close. And uh, oh, I should say one more thing as I look again, look at the photographs. The inside of the circles, inside of each of the circles, is slightly darker than the outside. So I'm going to put some more uh, red oxide, pure red oxide. So I'll be painting this time with a transparent color. But if I'm very careful, that shouldn't be any problem. Okay. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is the texture. And what is actually happening here is, and by the way, this is flopping around. I'm, I am noticing that. I'm sure you are too. It's, it's not bothering me at this point because I'm perfectly fine with black coming up under there. If I were painting an opaque light color, then I would, I would take the time to straighten it out. What is happening with these leopard spots is that the dark hairs and it, it, they all grow in one direction. There's not hairs going one direction or the other. It's all the hairs are going that way. So the black hairs start here and overlap into the light areas and the light areas, hairs start here and overlap into the dark areas. <laughs>